my baby was born January 15th of 24. As I'm holding him, he was very gurgly and it just seemed off. Um, and so they took him to get checked out. Uh, he clamped down, stopped breathing, turned blue, super scary. Um, it turns out his esophagus formed into his trachea and so he couldn't swallow. When you get the phone call of your baby having a baby, it's one of the coolest things. We had 30 minutes of celebration on that, and then um, Autumn texts back and said, uh-oh, something's wrong with the baby. The helicopters couldn't fly because of the weather, and so it did take the ambulance quite some time to get there. When they got there, um, they said they had a lot of difficulty putting Silas in the box because he kept stopping breathing. It took him three hours to get loaded on and over and over seen, seeing your baby's oxygen stats drop to zero over and over and over while he's turning blue was the most helpless feeling that I've ever experienced. A few days later, uh, this was on a Monday, and then on a Friday they were doing the surgery for Silas, and the surgery didn't hold, the stitching didn't hold. That caused a series of um, crisis. There were several times we thought we were losing him, and um, the doctor told Autumn. We are doing the best we can to support him, and we're doing everything we can do to support him. But the more options we use, the less options we have. And we're starting to run out of options. When they were finally intubated and they asked like, you know, we're gonna, this one's gonna be a little rough. You're gonna have to step out. And uh, so I remember stepping out and stepping away to the bathroom and just losing it. Just sobbing and begging God just for his life. Everybody staying at the Ronald McDonald House, they are all here having similar experiences because these are their babies. Their most prized part of their hearts are here and in one way or another fighting for their lives. It is tough and it is very challenging. You know, when you have something as heavy as a, the sudden turn from a healthy, exciting new grandbaby being born to, is this gonna be a story of tragedy? You know, um, you're not thinking about what are we gonna have for dinner? Where are we gonna go? And I think Children's Mercy has such a relationship with the Ronald McDonald House and the staff there that here we are at 2.30 in the morning and my daughter already had a phone call or support saying, we have a room over here for you and you can stay over here. I remember asking like, okay, so does insurance help with this? I know you guys help, but I don't know exactly how. And they're like, no, we're funded with donations. It's the people keeping us here. And I was so humbled and just in tears of gratitude that we were gonna be able to stay. And that was a financial burden that was lifted. It was amazing. I thank God every day, and it has made the absolute world of difference in such a difficult time. I watch the three-year-old Cannon while she's at the hospital, and we kind of tag team. Cannon is such a shy, quiet guy. Until he wakes up. <laughs> when he wakes up, everybody knows it. He doesn't seem to know any strangers. He's ready to play with everybody. Look. Hannah and I ain't playing no more. Yeah.
You're funny. Let me turn it on. There it goes, there it goes. I fixed it. The Ramadan house is one of his favorite places by far. Don't want to leave. I actually want to live here. I don't want to go back to the big house. Have been things he's said <laughs> because he is so surrounded by love. I couldn't imagine trying to go through this journey anywhere else. They are something special. Hold on to me and it's not just a place, but it actually is a sanctuary to help provide hope. They give you the necessities with food and, and your shelter and a safe, nice, clean place to live. But the staff, the people that are there go above and beyond and they have become like family to us. Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home They provide a lot of activities. Casey Wolf was one of Canna's most favorite things in the whole world and he thinks they're good buddies. We've got a basement at Longfellow that has a fort in it with foam blocks that we call it a fort because Kenan and I spend hours down there building a house and a fort and let your imagination run wild. Through this experience with them and watching them love on my kids, personally, I will advocate for the Ronald McDonald House until the day I die. It's funny because you get so excited to go home and to get discharged, but there is a bit of being bittersweet because you've made very close-knit friends with some of these people. When you've had a really long day at the hospital and then you walk through the doors and you have somebody at the front desk that just fully invested in the journey with us, but also cheering us on, and that's something that you cannot put into words on how much you appreciate it. They're incredible people. I love my baby brother, Silas. He's cute. Saying that I'm proud of Silas, proud doesn't really cut it. It's a word similar, it's a word that we have for it, <laughs> but um, I am completely overjoyed with where he is. And so for Silas, I have so much hope for him. Though his childhood journey is going to look a little different, I'm so thankful neurologically he is unharmed. I'm so excited to see what his future looks like and him keeping up with his big siblings. It's gonna be an adventure for sure.